Man, what the hell is going on with commercial air travel? For too long, we've taken for granted that flying seven miles above the earth in a metal tube for hours on end is a death-defying feat. Ever since the pandemic, people have increasingly turned completely feral while at cruising altitude, and this phenomenon has more recently extended beyond the passenger cabin into the cockpit, where pilots have started pointing loaded guns at each other over seemingly minor disagreements. Or in the case of one pilot, uh, just trying to crash the damn plane after staying up for several days absolutely zooted on psychedelic drugs. So, what is going on? Well, we uh, do have an update on that mushroom pilot for you, uh, before we even get into more mid-flight madness. When it was initially reported that Alaska Airlines pilot Joseph Emerson had cut the engines to a plane and then blamed it all on magic mushrooms, a lot of people were like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. But everyone who'd ever actually done mushrooms was a little more skeptical. Now, this seemed more like one of those horror stories from the D.A.R.E. program than anything resembling a real mushroom experience. We were hoping that at some point there'd be more clarification on the specifics of what led to this near catastrophe. And last week, the New York Times managed to land a jailhouse interview with the mushroom man himself, who's facing 83 counts of attempted murder, to tell his side of the story. And here you go. Mr. Emerson, who has pleaded not guilty, said he had no intention of hurting anyone that day. Hmm. Instead, he said, he was desperate to awaken from a hallucinogenic state that had consumed him since taking psychedelic mushrooms two days earlier during a weekend getaway with friends to commemorate the death of his best friend. Whoa, weird time to do it. Uh, yeah, not... Not recommended. I Set and setting, usually the first rule of uh, any psychedelic trip. And uh, I, maybe previously they had all bonded over this or something, but I, I don't know. I, it's, to me, it seems like a weird... You're already starting off on the wrong foot, I would say. Yes. It was a loss that had plunged him into deep grief and triggered a search for help with what he realized were long-standing mental health issues. Mm -hmm. For decades, the Federal Aviation Administration has grounded pilots dealing with depression or other mental diagnoses with policies so strict that the decision to seek psychiatric help or a prescription for standard antidepressant medication is enough to trigger a suspension of their flight eligibility. It is a system that has left many pilots, including Mr. Emerson, to struggle largely alone. A lot of us aren't as forthcoming as we otherwise would be, Mr. Emerson said. Yeah, and obviously this will lead to people who are suffering uh, in some ways to experiment, to dabble, among other things, right, to yeah. figure out a way to uh, help themselves without it going down on their medical records, which you would assume would... Uh, are you taking any prescription drugs? No, I'm not. Why did you just wink? Oh, uh, no reason. <laughs> it's just a tick I have. Yeah. Well, the article then explains that Emerson had wanted to be a pilot since he was a young boy and achieved that goal by mowing lawns to save up for flight lessons, getting his pilot's license at just 17 years old. How big were these lawns? Some big lawns. Yeah. You used to be able to put your whole family through college on mowing a lawn. Mowing a lawn. Mm -hmm. That's all while enduring what sounds like pretty serious bullying at school. In his years as a pilot, his reputation among colleagues, friends, and family was that he was calm, kind, and level-headed. But when his closest friend died suddenly while out jogging back in 2018, he understandably had a rough time with that and sought psychological help. His mental health was apparently bad enough that his therapist recommended seeing a psychiatrist for a professional diagnosis. But, well, that's potentially a career ender in the aviation field. Oh. Back to the article. She's the first one who said, you know, I can't diagnose you, but would you ever consider seeing a doctor who could diagnose you and possibly get on an antidepressant? Mr. Emerson said. He did some research and learned that taking any medication would likely ground him from flying for a prolonged period of time. For decades, the FAA banned pilots with depression from flying and prohibited them from using prescription treatments, even common antidepressants, hoping to avoid suicide attempts or other mental breakdowns in the cockpit. Pilots undergo regular medical assessments in which they must disclose to the FAA a range of medical diagnoses, including depression or anxiety, and document the health professionals they have consulted. Such a strict system led many pilots to avoid both consultation and treatment. Acknowledging the stigma created by these rules, the FAA in 2010 moved to approve certain antidepressants for use by pilots with mild or moderate depression. Pilots who choose to go on the medication are nonetheless prohibited from flying for months during a monitoring period. And the process of winning approval to go back to active flying can take even longer. Even then, they may not win approval to fly. The potential effect on careers, according to aviation doctors, industry lawyers, and pilots, has prompted many aviators to either lie about the treatment they are receiving, risking a punishment of five years in prison and a $250,000 fine, 
or simply avoid treatment. And uh, it should go without saying that a lot of pilots, a lot of commercial pilots came from military service. Yeah, which not as much as it used to be, but it's it's like a solid one third of all pilots like served in combat and would you, you know would assume maybe a uh, decent chance of maybe having some psychological residue from that experience. Yeah, at the very least, it might seem beneficial to talk to a professional and. Uh, no, yeah. shut up. We're gonna do. Hey, are you fine? Because if you say you're not, you lose your job. FAA, so are you fine? FAA literally doing don't ask, don't tell, but with uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, mental health. It's problems. a great system. It only fails every once in a while, and when it does, look, nothing happens. Yeah. So uh, the averted system, catastrophe. The system works. Yeah. So yeah, rather than potentially lose his career by getting professional treatment for depression. He tried alternative methods like uh, some therapy where he would revisit painful memories in order to attempt to relieve trauma. Also, he started drinking a lot, but not, he claims, when he was on the job. Mm. Anyways, that brings us to the mushrooms. A few days before that fateful flight last month, Emerson was out in the wilderness with some friends on a trip memorializing their dead friend. And here's what happened. During a Friday night of sipping on whiskeys and beers, someone had the idea of taking psychedelic mushrooms. No, they didn't. They brought them with them. This was the plan all along. Well, <laughs> you do, some people just have them on them. Sure. Just in case. Mm-hmm. Mr. Emerson had never tried them. He would often avoid even secondhand marijuana smoke in case it showed up on a drug test. He said his friends assured him they were safe, did not last a long time, and would not show up on a drug test. He was not scheduled to fly again for six days. Around a fire, he ate a bit of mushrooms. Soon, the friends were sharing deep conversations about Mr. Piney and Mr. Emerson fixated on the crackling of the blaze. But as the others started going to bed that night, Mr. Emerson said he began to feel a deep unease, a sense that his friends were teasing him and maybe trying to hurt him. I felt fearful of them, he said. At the same time, I started to have this feeling that this wasn't real. He said he began worrying about the safety of his wife and children, fretted over his estranged relationship with his brother, replayed shameful things that had happened over his lifetime, from childhood to days in adulthood when he drank too much. I thought of a lot of traumatic things in that time where I was like, am I dead? Is this hell, he said? I'm reliving that trauma. He woke up the next morning desperate to return home. He spent the day with a nagging sense that he was locked in purgatory. And yeah, like, okay, this is his first time doing it. And after I read that, I was like, okay, well, the friend died in 2018 and they're doing it to honor him this many years later. That's probably fine. They're out in the woods where is a, it's a good I place mean, to be. I mean, probably fine for everyone else who maybe, for him. who maybe has done a little better job at processing this because they have access to mental health sure. uh, options that this pilot does not have if he wants to remain a pilot. And also seems like they had done it before and he hadn't. Yeah, you And don't. the fact that he hasn't even doesn't even smoke marijuana. Because marijuana will get all this stuff out of your system too, all of these traumas uh-huh. of your of your past. Uh, but yes, it really uh, he went from zero to a hundred with the psychedelic options. Yeah, uh, it's he really. I mean, this is on his friends in a lot of ways. Like, yeah, no, it's safe. It's totally fine. You're you're gonna be fine. Look, we're all doing it. It's not gonna show up on a drug test. It lasts uh-huh. a couple hours. I mean, that would be. They're basing it on their own experience, but you do have a responsibility to understand. That this shit do hit different, yeah. depending on who you are. Um, Especially if it's your first time. Like, uh, and, and yeah, this shit, it can trigger stuff in some people. I, yeah. There was one, there was one, t- one of the craziest uh, weed memories I have that is just seared into my memory is like, me and another friend of mine who used to smoke a lot in college are in a bathroom at a party with this third guy, a friend of ours, who didn't smoke. And he asked us to smoke him out. And we're having a great time. And then he just like had like a full-on fucking seizure for like... A short one, but the like diabetic or something. I don't know what he was, but uh, it was it was terrifying. Yeah, I'm it sure. Was, like blazed out of my mind, and this dude just like possessed by a demon for like I don't know, probably 15, 20 seconds, and he snapped out of it. We're like, hey, buddy, you all right? He's like, oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. Would have been nice to know that before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really killed the vibe. Yeah, no, I uh, I remember one of the more fun times. Uh, uh, I I was in the woods. And I was like, oh, it's so hot out, and and the sun's burning. I wish I had some sunscreen. And then out of the woods, I'm not joking, out of the woods, a wild Elliot appears with an entire bottle of sunscreen in his pocket. uh, And it was just the perfect timing. It's all about uh, planning. (laughs) You You don't just go from not having ever taken mushrooms or considered taking them to being like, okay, I guess I'm doing mushrooms. Yeah. I'm in a fucking terrible state of mind. 
But I've it was funny to me because we, we weren't together. <laughs> uh, we were separated by like a, a decent distance. We were both wandering around in the woods. But I was just like, man, this sun is uh, yeah. coming down now. I'm out in a clearing. And then all of a sudden, Elliot appears. Well, some people whine and some people act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, won't someone help me? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, apparently this feeling for him refused to go away. Emerson had what sounds like a complete psychotic break. And heading back to work was not a fun experience. Having had little or no sleep, Mr. Emerson departed the getaway with a friend on Sunday and made his way to the airport in Everett, still with the recurrent feeling that none of what was happening was real. The GPS directions in the car made no sense to him. The airline staff seemed to be using the wrong protocols for boarding the plane. In the cockpit, he felt like he should have known one of the two pilots, but he did not and was confounded as to how that could be. As the plane took off, he said, he struggled to understand the pilot's response to a report of mild turbulence ahead. Were these really pilots? Was he still dreaming? He texted the friend who had dropped him off at the airport, reporting that he was, quote, having a panic attack. The friend asked if he needed anything. Send love, Mr. Emerson replied. I need to be home. The friend's reply came through a spoken text to audio message he heard through an earbud under his cockpit headset. Do your breathing exercises, the friend advised. It was a comment that made no sense to him. He threw off the headset and yelled at the pilots for help. When nothing happened, Mr. Emerson said he panicked convinced he was indeed imagining the whole thing. He needed to wake himself up. He grabbed the engine shutoff handles located just above the jump seat where he was sitting. Ugh. Ugh, what a wake up. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows that in order to get out of a bad dream, you, you kill yourself in the dream. That's how huh. it works, right? Yeah, I guess. No, no, because if you die in the dream, you die, you die in, in real life. life. Yeah. Anyway, after that debacle, uh, obviously he didn't accomplish what he tried to do, thankfully. Mm -hmm. But uh, he went back to the back of the plane and he, he voluntarily asked a flight attendant to please put handcuffs on him and also repeatedly asked them whether he was in a nightmare. Uh, he also tried to open the emergency door, thinking that he could end the dream by jumping out. Uh, even after landing, he was asking the cops who arrested him whether what was happening was real. And he says that even days later at his court arraignment, he wasn't quite sure if this was all a nightmare or not. He didn't manage to snap out of it until five days after taking the mushrooms, uh, at which point he was, of course, horrified by the whole situation. Yeah, I would assume that. So there you go. Uh, the whole story is a lot more fucking sad now than it was before. Yeah. Um, the question of how mushrooms could have possibly caused this has seemingly been answered. Mm -hmm. uh, mushrooms can, in fact, lead to this kind of thing if the person taking them has been avoiding much needed mental health treatment for years because they don't want to lose their job and are therefore much more susceptible to a psychotic episode. Yeah, and I, I'm sure the the idea of that looming over his head would add to it. It would snowball it, yeah. create a strong sense of anxiety. I, I, I Look, it, it's undeniable this guy put a lot of lives at risk. This is absolutely unexcusable behavior, but I do feel bad for him. Yeah, no. He has a wife and kids. He went out on a trip with his friends. Uh, was kind of, it seems, maybe a little bit of social pressure. I mean, especially like at our age, at his age, getting together with friends in a setting like that, a very rare occasion. Uh -huh. You want to make the most of it. Uh, and uh, it ruined his life. Literally ruined his life. Uh, uh, and luckily, didn't ruin the lives of, you know, 80 other people or 100 other people. But uh, it's just insane that this is what happened when the alternative would have been like a doctor putting him on like 10 milligrams of fucking Zoloft. Or yeah. Something. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. What's going to happen? It's like, I don't know. Fucking millions of people take that shit every fucking day and yeah. nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But no, we can't have that. And it's like, yeah, people are going to naturally uh, they're going to look for other ways to escape <laughs> their mental anguish. Yeah. And uh this is basically the worst possible thing that could have happened. Like this well, guy, uh, it's the second to okay. the worst possible thing that could have happened. Sure. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, real bad. Like this trial is going to be super interesting because obviously he's facing eighty-three counts of attempted murder. That's like a million years in prison. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't think he deserves that. That's uh, I don't know. This is going to be a very interesting trial. Also, you got to imagine, whichever one of his friends pulled out that bag of mushrooms on that trip. Oh, my God. How are they going to limit themselves? Hope they're not a pilot. Yeah. Or just a person with uh, an abundance of empathy for their friend whose life they have indirectly. Yeah. Uh, of course, he's responsible for, his, for himself. 
but indirectly, you got to feel a little guilt. A little? You got to feel a lot of guilt. Yeah, no, this was... <laughs> it uh, would eat me alive uh-huh. inside. Yeah, no, this... this. Good Lord. Ugh. Anyways, Ooh. thankfully, the other airplane news today uh, that we have is, is not as horribly depressing as that. But it's still pretty alarming in terms of safety. Like this recent oopsie via NPR. A U.S.-bound plane took off from London last month with four damaged window panes, including two that were completely missing. Whoops. According to U.K. air accident investigators, no one was injured by the window malfunctions, which appeared to have been caused by high-power lights used in a film shoot. The U.K.'s air accident investigation branch reported in a special bulletin published November 4th. The missing windows weren't discovered until the plane was climbing at an altitude of 13,000 feet, according to the AAIB report. Several passengers recalled that after takeoff, the aircraft cabin seemed noisier <laughs> and colder than Weird. they were used to. Weird. The investigators wrote, a crew member walked towards the back of the aircraft where he spotted a window seal flapping on the left side of the aircraft. The window pane appeared to have slipped down, the report reads. He described the cabin noise as loud enough to damage your hearing. Yeah, that's kind of out of the ordinary. Wonder what's wonder what that's about. Was just no one sitting within the vicinity of these windows? Uh, no, there was only like 10 people. It was like, it was a flight that just had like crew members on. Ah. It was like a charter flight company. No problem then. So yeah, they were just transporting crew. Um, I imagine if there were actual passengers, they would have probably caught this before taking off. Yeah. Hey, excuse me? Excuse me? Windows open. Uh, this is my arm just sticking out the window here. Probably shouldn't. I don't know. I don't know anything about planes. It seems, seems bad. This is a, a, another... Uh, amazing scenario for a person who is self-conscious to be in. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to bother anyone. Yeah, or a person on mushrooms. Yeah. No, yeah. the window's there. That's just me. I'm. I'm losing I'm, my mind. I'm, I'm, the window is definitely there. Sir, why didn't you report that the window uh, was clearly wide open? I just. I have a lot of ang- anxiety. Yeah. And, uh, I, I just, didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't. Didn't want to be a, a burden. Yeah. I didn't want to be the one that uh, made everyone else late for their flight. Yeah. Jeez. So yeah, it says that they believe the damage was caused by high-powered lights from a film shoot. Pornography? No. <laughs> Your mind immediately jumps to pornography. What mm-hmm. else are you going to film in a plane? Uh, movies, advertisements. Nah, it's pornography. Training films. Nah. Um, I don't think so. I guess. Has a porn ever been shot on a plane? Probably. On I don't a, know. On a plane set? Like a real plane? Sure. This is a real plane. Well, it was a set for a short period of time. I guess. So yeah, the plane had been used for filming a day earlier with a bunch of high-powered lights shining on the plane, which was meant to simulate a sunrise when seen from inside the plane. Uh, these lights apparently melted the material that was holding the window panes in place. I mean, if you've been on a set, you know that film lights, they can get pretty damn hot sometimes. But still, I we'd love to find out Exactly how hot they were, because you would think that the materials that airplanes are made out of would be able to withstand some serious temperatures. Especially, we're not talking fire, we're not talking lasers or anything, just a light shining yeah. on it. These things are up in the sky with the fucking sun aiming at them. It's very cold up there. So yeah, you would think this wouldn't be a problem, but apparently not though. Apparently airplanes are more fragile than you think. Sometimes the windows just melt. Yeah. It happens. But in other airplane news, uh, sometimes cargo is live cargo. And live cargo is, it needs to be properly secured. That's very important. And even when it is, things can happen. Here's ABC News. A 747 cargo plane heading to Belgium from New York was forced to return to John F. Kennedy International Airport after a horse escaped from its stall, according to the air traffic control audio. According to the audio clip, which was obtained by You Can See ATC via Live ATC, the horse got loose within 30 minutes of takeoff. The Boeing 747 was barely at 31,000 feet when a pilot told air traffic control that a horse had escaped from its stall and that they needed to return to JFK on Thursday, according to Flight Radar 24. In the air traffic control audio, a pilot is heard saying, We are a cargo plane with a live animal, a horse on board. The horse managed to escape its stall. There's no issue with flying but we need to go back to New York as we can't re-secure the horse. The flight was forced to make a U-turn off the coast of Boston and dump about 20 tons of fuel over the Atlantic. Jesus. 10 miles west of Mar- Martha's Vineyard due to the flight's weight, according to the audio. It's a lot of, a lot of gas to be just dumping in the ocean. Well, they had to do it. And uh, yeah, this is, you know, luckily it was just this horse because just this week, uh, we sent some precious cargo all the way back to China. Yeah, our precious pandas. And now they're saying, hey, maybe we send you some new pandas. We could have just kept the pandas. Yeah, 
this panda diplomacy. We've got to get this shit figured Why out. Why couldn't they schedule that uh, at a better time, like before the pandas were shoved into a cargo hold yeah, that's on a, a plane long flight. and flown to Beijing? These pandas, they're going to be so traumatized from that flight, they're not going to want to fuck for the rest and, of their lives. And then they're just going to fly them back. Yeah. After the meeting with uh, President Xi, he's like, yeah, you know what was good? That whole panda diplomacy thing we had going. Yeah. Whatever Remember, happened to that? <laughs> uh, he just wanted them back. He wanted them safe and sound for when he presses the button. Yeah. And well, I appreciate that. Or it was like, that is literally a bargaining chip. You're like, get them out of there, and then I'm going to go back. And you know Biden's going to want those pandas back. Everyone loves the pandas. It's so funny, though. Like, every time I've been to a zoo that has pandas, you can't even fucking see them. They're like hiding. They you you can't see them. You if you're lucky if you actually get to see a panda with your naked eye because they're always hiding off in the corners and shit. Terrible zoo animal. You, Very you, interesting creatures, but as a zoo animal, not good. We got a new rhino in the L.A. Zoo. Been meaning to go see it. Yeah, I'm due for a L.A. Zoo trip. We get the lights up for Christmas now. I'd love to see you in a Santa hat, Santa hat looking at all the animals. Yeah. Or are the animals looking at us? They got gorillas. Yeah, they do. I go there and sit and watch the grill all the time. I got a year membership. That's all I care about is the great apes. I walk in and out like I own the place. I got my annual membership and, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool wow. experience. The the gorillas, I, I go too much. They said that I can't, they can't go anymore. The gorillas are falling in love with me. Yeah, I didn't check that out. They got the, what, the Southwest Museum right there. Yeah, Gene Autry. They got the, they got the little train. The tiny train? Uh, Walt, Walt Disney's old train house was uh, <laughs> put on the back of a truck and moved to that train yeah. location. Griffith Park, lovely. Uh, what a wonderful a park. Real jewel People of Los Angeles. People say we don't have parks in Los Angeles where they're lying or blind. Well, they just picture a park and they picture something flat, not a big fucking mountain. Yeah, well, there's a lot of surrounding But that's areas. real wilderness. There's meadows there too. Yeah, there are. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so this was a cargo plant with the horse. Um Presumably when ground control is like, hey, everything going on good up there? And they're like, nay. <laughs> like, okay, so everything's bad? Nay. <laughs> What's going on up there? But Mr. Uh, Ed's on the loose. But yeah, no, there was not a horse running up and down the aisle terrorizing hundreds of passengers. So that would have been very funny. Mm -hmm. That would have been a lot funnier than the truth, which is that the horse was properly secured in its stall. But it got so spooked by turbulence that it managed to squeeze itself halfway through the hole that is there for them to just stick their heads out. And upon landing, the horse's injuries from, you know, getting stuck and thrashing around, they were deemed uh, serious enough that the horse no! was euthanized. Presumably with a gun. Uh, that, that's the only way they, they put up the, the, at the racetrack, they put up the big white things and bang. Maybe this, they used something this is else. horrible. Why was it going to Belgium? Probably to race or some shit. Not for the delicious chocolate? I don't know. Can a horse have chocolate? Dogs can't. Well, it can't anymore. It's dead. Can a hypothetical horse have chocolate? I don't know. I, I, would they even like it? They want apples. They do love apples. Give me an apple. That sucks. Uh, they sucks. want oats. But yeah, the RIP that horse. So, damn, that story is sad too. I thought yeah, we way said, to go, Elliot. I thought we said we weren't going to have any more sad stories. Uh, let, let's cheer ourselves up with some news. Uh, some similar news from last month, though, that we somehow missed. Sure. Here's the independent. Passengers were given a midair fright after a giant albino rat and an otter escaped <laughs> from a traveler's hand luggage and began roaming about the plane cabin on a Viet jet recent flight. Shocked flyers saw staff on board attempt to catch the animals after they were discovered on the three-hour journey between Bangkok, Thailand and Taipei, Taiwan, reports The Telegraph. I walked back from the toilet and my friend whispered softly to me, there's a rat on the plane. <laughs> According to a post of Facebook from someone claiming to be on the flight. I was confused, so he said again, pet rat, pet rat. It has a white body, and it's not small. I told the cabin crew, and they checked the plane. That's when they found the otter under one of the seats. <laughs> they kept looking for the white rat. Oh, this it... isn't a rat. This is just an otter. <laughs> what the fuck? I thought you said it was a rat. They kept looking for the white rat, and an employee caught the rat. It bit them on the hand while they carried it back to the kitchen at the back of the plane. Oh, mm. <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Finally, some food. Officials from Taiwan's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Agency searched every bag on the plane once the aircraft landed at Taiwan International Airport, where they, where they uncovered yet more animals. One marmot, two otters, 28 star turtles, and two unidentified rodents were found, apparently smuggled by a Chinese passenger who was described as not cooperative by officials. She now faces a fine of up to 25,000 pounds under regulations relating to the control and prevention of infectious disease. Imagine 
if that Mr. Emerson was on this flight. This isn't real. I, I'm. There's otters. There's there rats, is. A marmot. Double confirmed. This is a nightmare. Time to crash this fucking plane yeah. and wake up. There Ooh. it is. Uh, the article also points out that Bangkok is a real international hub for people trying to smuggle animals in their luggage, with two people arrested back in 2022 while attempting to board a flight with 100 live endangered animals in their luggage, including two armadillos, two porcupines, 50 chameleons, 35 turtles, and 20 snakes. That's too many animals. That's an insane amount of animals to try and sneak through airport security, and the bigger ones were clearly visible on the security x-rays. So we're not really sure what the plan was here. I do remember... Uh, when flying through Asia, they have signs, like in yeah. America, it's like, don't bring your gun on the yeah. plane because you'll forget because you're always carrying a don't gun in America. Don't bring a hundred tiny turtles. Yes. Also, they reveal the amount of money these women stood to gain from smuggling a hundred live animals, and it comes out to around $5,000, <laughs> which doesn't really seem like enough to justify trying something like this, but they also might have been forced to do this against their will. Yeah. Yeah. And that's usually how smuggling goes. Some of the animals, I guess... Makes sense, but like a rat, you couldn't find like that was the pet. The other ones were for yeah, sure. no, that the was mine. That's that's just my trout. That's my emotional support rat. Yeah. Also, like an otter. That's an insane animal to to try smuggling. They'll rip you limb from yeah, limb. Yeah, as we've learned recently, otters Once they attack. They don't stop. Otters of the sea variety and the river variety. They are vicious uh, man eaters. They, they, They'll get in your hair and rip it right out. And like you know, if you thought that horse was spooked. Go into turbulence with a fucking otter? It's gonna uh, rip your face off. Scary times. Was it worth it, lady? This is uh, this is not the best episode to film right before I step on an airplane because I'm immediately leaving, <laughs> uh, leaving here to go to LAX. Well, I hope uh, I hope your pilot isn't having a psychotic episode. Yeah. I hope there's no horse on board that has to be euthanized, and I hope there's no rats and otters running around. I hope I hope the windows are all properly, yeah. but give it a good tap well, while you're sitting there. The way there, heading to Florida, I feel like. Not as many uh, potential. It's on the episodes. way back. On the way the, back, all the Florida men, all the Gators on the plane, and everything like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be the real problem. Yeah. We'll see, though. We'll see. But enough about air transportation. Thank Let, you. Let's switch over to ground transportation. Oh no! Now there are a lot of ways to get around: cars, motorcycles, bikes, scooters, skateboards, heelys. Yeah. But over in Afghanistan, the Taliban government continues to catch up with the modern world. At very slow pace, and they've recently embraced a personal transportation trend which peaked in popularity over here uh, several decades ago. Rollerblades. In the decades since their height of popularity in the mid-90s, rollerblades haven't been seen as all that cool in the West, with, with some even very uh, hatefully referring to them as fruit boots, mm -hmm. insinuating that anyone using them is gay, as if that's a problem. Maybe the problem is you. Uh -huh. <laughs> rollerblades may be considered lame, but uh, the, have you considered? What it might look like to rock a pair of rollerblades while kitted out in desert camo, wielding an AK-47. Because I think, you try calling this man a, a fruit booter, I dare you. It would look like this. And yeah, 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 I changed my mind. Yeah, that's the Taliban cruising the mean streets of Kabul in style. Weaving between cars in ways that simply aren't possible for a Humvee. As Vice describes it, the Taliban is skating through the streets of Kabul on rollerblades. Footage surfaced online last week of Taliban security forces on patrol in Afghanistan's largest city and quickly went viral. Taliban flags hung from the soldiers of some of the forces and fluttered in the breeze as the soldiers rollerbladed while holding onto a military vehicle and carrying AK-style rifles. Two years after U.S. withdrawal, the video is a striking reminder of the Taliban's <laughs> victory and America's failure. <laughs> They're laughing at us. Yeah. They're just taunting us now. This is certainly what they meant when they said radical Islam. Yeah. Someone should show them skateboards. This reminds me of uh, a movie no one saw except for me and maybe a few others called S The Stupids. Uh, starring Tom Arnold, uh -huh. where uh, he looks at his bicycle. He has to get somewhere really fast. He looks at his bicycle and he goes, two wheels. And he looks at his car and he goes, ha four wheels. And then he looks over and he sees a pair of rollerblades and he goes, eight wheels. And he rollerblades <laughs> slowly away from the... You can get some real speed if you've got those, uh, the wheels properly lubed up. And you know what you're doing. Yeah, I guess. Um, in, a, in a place like, as long as you're only going on street, you are a formidable opponent. I guess so. Lot, and, with traffic and, and all that too. Yeah, yeah, just weaving in and out. That movie is, uh, they do a, a beautiful musical number of the I'm My Own Grandpa song. 
The Stupids? It's called The Stupids. Okay. And the whole movie you're, is you're about how they're stupid. Movie? Okay. I don't know. I was young. I don't know when it came out. The late 90s? Okay. Mid 90s? Something okay. like that? So at the, at the you know, when, when rollerblades were cool. Yeah, when they were cool. When the Mighty Ducks were, uh, were skating around. Sure. At the local uh, basketball courts uh, being, being champions. Mm-hmm. And there was, uh, there was like, there had to have been at least one like rad style movie about rollerblades. Soul know. Skaters? Was Soul Skaters a, a rollerblading movie? Mm-mm. I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, they're back. Rollerblades are back. They are. It is getting more popular. I'm seeing it more and more on my feed. And I have a couple of friends who used to do it when they were younger who have picked it up again. Uh, it's interesting to see their yeah. progress. Yeah, the future is now, old man. Yeah. What? Look, you're walking around with those boring feet anyway. Might as well put some wheels on it. Right. Yeah. You're using physics to get around faster. Mm-hmm. You're catching up. Anyways, we've got more weird news coming up in the headlines half of the show, but we first got to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Factor. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Too busy with holiday plans to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays with Factor. Choose from 35 plus weekly, flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door and ready to eat in just two minutes. Looking for special occasion meals during the holidays? Level up with Gourmet Plus options, prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Enjoy premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. And when you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor's got you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that also taste great? Try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. I've been having a couple of their fall meals and they are delicious. I had some, uh, some sage chicken with, uh, I can't remember the side, but it was, uh, it was very good. Was there pumpkins in it? There were sweet potato fries in Ooh. one of them with a little, little bit of like a molasses or syrup oh, on it. Yeah. yeah. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 and use code weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. That's code weeklyweird50 at factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 to get 50% off. This episode is also sponsored by AG1. We started drinking AG1 daily. I figured it would uh, just be an easier way to get all the daily vitamins, and it certainly is, but I was still surprised at how much better I felt overall. With more energy, better digestion, AG1 is just about the easiest good daily habit that you can pick up. That's because AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. And refine that gut. Mm -hmm. Not only did I replace my multivitamin with AG1, but I love that every scoop also includes prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for that gut support. Coffee used to be my number one priority first thing in the morning, but step aside coffee, AG1 is now my number one. Mm -hmm. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com weird. That's drinkag1.com weird. Check it out. I got a travel pack in my uh, backpack ready yeah, to go. Yeah, throw a couple travel packs in the bag. Yeah. Stay regular mm-hmm. up, in the, up in the sky. Because I'm going to try to run when I'm in Florida and keep myself honest. And you need those vitamins. Because every bit of food there is disgusting and fried. Mm-hmm. You can only eat chilies so That's many times. That's all they have. It's only chilies <laughs> and red lobster. Going back to the home country. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's get to the weirdest, wildest, craziest headlines from around the world this week. Starting with... An American woman said she was shocked to discover that Alaska isn't actually an island, calling for an overhaul of the school curriculum. 
Lady, I love that she's trying to blame this on like the, like there are many things you can blame on the U.S. educational system, but this one is a hundred percent on you, lady. Yeah. This is, and she's like, she's like, this is a TikTok video. She's like, yeah, like a lot of other people have said the same thing too. I'm like, yeah, sorry, you're dumb and they're dumb. Like you never ever fucking looked at a globe. That's what I'm wondering. Like, yeah. Like I guess if the only map you had ever seen ever was a, just the United States, just a U.S. map. Yeah. And you hadn't stopped to consider like why Alaska and Hawaii are in like separate boxes mm -hmm. or even why an island would have straight lines for its borders. Like that That's is the on, ice wall. That Elliot. is on you. There are many criticisms you can level at the U.S. education system, but not this. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is all your fault. Uh, she was also shocked. She's like, wow, Alaska is like huge. I always thought Texas was bigger than Alaska. <laughs> Again, how have you just gone through life never, ever looking at a map? It drives me insane. Especially if, as a person who loves maps. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just go on Google Maps and like just browse around. Just, you know, refresh my memory on like the fucking countries of like the Eastern <laughs> Bloc. I'm like, oh yeah, Croatia, pretty weird shaped. Where's Estonia again? Oh, okay, cool. We should uh, get to Rainbolt with this lady as a teacher. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, well, I'm sure. He, he, uh, just to see how frustrated he would get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Alaska is. Lady, not this an is island. on you and also. It's double on you because you made a fool of yourself. Yeah, why would you admit this? You would have to waterboard me to get this information out of me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think in my youth, I probably believed some real dumb stuff, but I would never, like, as an adult, be like, I still believe this. Yeah. This is like people who are like, how was I supposed to know New Mexico was a state? <laughs> this is the American education system. I mean, like you said, there are a lot of things that you could say about the U.S. education system, but uh, some of it has to be on you. Yeah. 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 A globe. A simple globe. Uh, yeah, literally just... Whoosh. Okay, dude, dude, dude. We used to have globes in this country. Yeah. It, could this be why so many people think the Earth is flat? Because they've just like, they've literally seen a map and they're like, never seen a globe? Yeah. What are you talking about? It's flat. These, it's going to blow their mind when they get on a plane and fly somewhere. It's like, why no. am I not going in a straight line? It's all, part of the, it's all part of the tricks yeah. that they get you. They don't want you to see the ice wall and the, the mm -hmm. paradise that lies beyond it. She's probably very upset that it's attached to Canada. Yeah. You mean yeah. I have to go through another country to get to my country? It ain't right. Mm -mm. We, we should invade. <laughs> also, like, with that level of assumption, just, yeah, you, I, I would just take a, a quick pleasure cruise over to Hawaii from Southern California. Right, it's right there. It's right there. Right next to the Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right next to the Channel Islands. Oh, yeah. it's so close. Six hours? What? On a plane? Ugh. In other education news, trans student removed from production of Oklahoma in Texas after new policy is implemented. Uh, and the, the policy is um, you can only play characters in the school play that are your birth gender. This wasn't even true hundreds of years ago. Yeah, no, this is ridiculous. It, like, I'm sorry, but uh, the, you, you, you're not taking theater arts away from the LGBTQ community. Nope. They, it's theirs. They've had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even way back when things were uh, even more bigoted, it was almost like a stopgap. Yeah. Just like, all right, <laughs> they have theater arts, these, these gays and weirdos that we don't like. At least we can isolate them over in the theater arts program. And now they're trying to, what? this is fucking bullshit. Elliot is talking as if he's a Texan right now, uh, or a racist, or a bigoted person. Not racist, bigoted person. Yeah, no, I, I I did theater all through high school. I fucking loved it. And yes, it was disproportionately, uh, yeah, uh, you know, some of the finest performances uh, I've ever in seen in terms of gender and sexuality. Yeah, it was it was kind of a refuge for just uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people that maybe weren't as accepted outside of that. It was like. And yeah, like it's pretty normal in theater for gender swapping and shit like that. It's been that way forever. But mm -hmm. no, uh, a trans male student who's been living as a male for years and is accepted as male by their classmates can't play a man in a play because of, I don't fucking know. The worst part is like no one who would complain about this are the ones that would even go to a yeah, school production no. of this. You don't fucking care about theater. You just want to punish other people for no reason. It's the same with Because like, you're uncomfortable. All the fucking library freaks. I guarantee you, none of these people have stepped foot in a fucking library for decades. Uh, uh, speaking of libraries, fucking Eric Adams shut down the New York public libraries on weekends. He's probably going to jail. I can't wait. 
Yeah, he is. Uh, there's a lot of investigations going yeah. on right now with I, Eric I, Adams. I'm genuinely shocked that Eric Adams is extremely corrupt. I could have never seen this coming. This is uh, <laughs> this is clearly uh, the rats of New York working together. Yeah, this is to a rat, get him unseated. A vast rat wing. The conspiracy. rats will be partying in the subways when he yep, is removed. Yep. It's all uh, all a ploy by Big Rat. Mm-hmm. Now he's the like King Rat. He's still, like as a. I mean, New York City is almost its own country, but like he's. Taking like bribes from like foreign countries and shit. <laughs> what? Yeah. How would that even work? I don't know. Anyway, I hope he goes to prison for life. Yeah, that'd be fun. They need a new mayor that we can make fun of. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of this one. <laughs> Rogue daycare workers busted for allegedly running child fight ring. Oh, well, this is terrible. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, yeah, there's like three and four year olds. Hopefully they grow up and uh, the memory of this, they don't have it. Because they don't retain it. Also like... Some real. How do you man, how do you manage to hire two, two separate people who are both like working at a daycare? Sounds like a great way to do a little bit of gambling on a child fight ring. Sounds like the job for me. And people they, are and they, lo- losing their damn minds. I guess so. Um, I mean, they said like none of the kids had injuries. I mean, they are no, children. Kids are made of rubber. They're not going to hurt each other that much, but it's still this is like it's not good. You shouldn't uh, shouldn't force children t- to fight each other for your amusement. No. I so, uh, thought we were past that, but I guess not. No. Tennessee man arrested for DUI and meth while driving lawnmower Santa's train full of kids. I mean, what's the worst that could have happened? That thing goes, what, like five miles an hour? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably nothing, but also... He's just wiling out up there, <laughs> drunk and on meth. Yeah, he loves Christmas. He's he's been listening to Mariah since before Halloween. It, and, honestly, uh, yeah, this, he wanted uh, those Christmas lights to burn a little bit brighter. Nobody was as <laughs> joyful as this guy driving that train. Wait, you can get a DUI driving a tractor? <laughs> Hold on, I thought this was America. Look, would you rather have some sad, apathetic teenager up there yeah. who doesn't even care about Christmas? This guy was in the spirit, or a guy who's so rip roaring drunk. That uh, his nose is glowing brighter than Rudolph. Also, Your Honor, uh, the meth actually counteracts a lot of the uh, the effects of the alcohol. I was balancing so myself out. Actually, I was in that moment. I was totally sober. Did everyone have a good time? I think everyone. <laughs> ha- I think the results don't lie. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Woo! Gwyneth Paltrow ski trial musical to debut in London. Hell yeah! That was that was the best live trial in yeah. a long time. Way better than that Johnny Depp one. That mm-hmm. one was kind of sad and no one really likable in it. The Gwyneth one, it, 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 it was very entertaining because also no one was likable in it, but they they had, it, the, the characters had interesting qualities. It actually yeah. made me, it, I regained some respect for Gwyneth that I didn't have before. Yeah. Uh, she could have been a real bitch about the whole situation, but she seemed like she only wanted to clear her name. Yeah. She only demanded one dollar in uh, restitution for... You know, the whole trial, the whole thing. So, but yeah, the musical it should be, this will be a fun one. Well, much like Texas, uh, this musical since it's in London, no trans people. Yeah, I better these women better all be played by women. The, the qu- men better all be played by men. The Biological. Queen, the Queen of England, J.K. Rowling, has made a proclamation. <sighs> yeah, transphobe island. Yeah, turf island. Mm-hmm. Chuck E. Cheese removes animatronics in all locations except one following release of Five Nights at Freddy's. I hope you gamers are happy. You've destroyed an American institution. Bring back Showbiz Pizza. I mean, Showbiz Pizza was who they... They bought Chuck E. Cheese or the... No, Showbiz Pizza started the the band. Yeah, but and they then merged at some Chuck point. Chuck E. Cheese bought Showbiz yeah. Pizza, got Nolan Bushnell his second millions. <laughs> yeah, the uh, and, founder uh, of Atari, Nolan Bushnell. Yeah, and so Chuck E. Cheese bought them, I think specifically for the technology yeah. that they had. And then this fucking video game comes you along. You would think it would be the most popular that singing and dancing animatronics would ever be. It's cool as shit. Yeah, they could actually have done a partnership with Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't, don't obviously don't make it gory or anything. Also, didn't Chuck E. Cheese go out of business? No, Pasquale's kept them afloat during the pandemic. Okay. There's one in Burbank. I drive past it. I, ne- <laughs> yeah. I never see any signs of life in you there. You know, uh, this is all the result, not of Five Nights at Freddy's, but of that Shane Dawson who claimed that they were stealing pizza slices out of everyone's pizzas. 
Remember that? He did some one of those. Yeah, he they, was should, on like they a, should sue him. They, he was on a conspiracy kick for a while yeah. before he was canceled, like the third or fourth time. <laughs> and uh, he did something about uh, Chuck E. Cheese's pizzas being weird. Yeah. Well, it's like, hey, buddy, come on. They're trying to run a business. They're struggling here. business here. They just chop it weird because it's a bunch of teenagers back there. Just yeah. Who cares? You're feeding pizza to fucking babies. Yeah. They don't, they don't even. They don't care. The mascot's a rat. Yeah, he's a rat. You think if we gave if we gave a shit about how our food looks and tastes, we would have a rat as our mascot? No. Yeah. It's fucking the, pizza for children. The pizza is the least of your worries in this building for what you can contract. Just going anywhere near the ball pit or touching a video game yeah. is going to result in a much more severe medical diagnosis. Or it's going to make your immune system nice and strong. Well, that's why you put kids in it when yeah. they're young. There you go. As for the adults, gloves and masks. A man gave himself poop transplants using his mom's feces to treat his debilitating Crohn's. Then he started experiencing her menopause symptoms. We didn't give a food warning before that. I haven't eaten, and I still want to throw up. We talked about poop transplants before. But not stealing your mom's fecal matter. didn't steal it. She gave it to him. To stuff it up your own ass. They, I mean, I don't know how they did it exactly. But this has been around. It is one of the proven treatments for uh, a lot of debilitating uh, gastrointestinal illnesses. It just uh, at this point, it's still there's they're not prescribing it too much. But this guy, yeah, but his, he did it at home, right? He did it by himself. He well, he also b- before he started, he reached out to one of the leading experts on it and was just like, let's say if someone were to do this, how would it work? He's talking to and, him like it's a Chat GPT prompt. Well, this is like long before ChatGPT. No, this but what I'm saying ago. is like the, the you yeah. have to even then you're like getting around yeah. the legal liabilities. Yeah, I think the doctor knew what was going on. Yeah, it was just like yeah, hypothetically, this is how it worked, and it fucking worked. Sure, worked so well he got menopause. Well, yeah, I mean it's fascinating. This is like uncharted territory, but yeah, when because his mom was going through menopause, and I guess the hormones were coming out yeah. in her poop, and he was he got all of her good like gut bacteria. He was nice and regular, but he also got like hot flashes. <laughs> oh my! The and, yeah, he, got, he got a bunch Mom, of metabolic. Mom, get symptoms. out of the way! I need to use the fainting couch. So yeah, this is interesting. Like, not only does the the poop transplant work, but you want to you want to get poop from someone whose like hormones are like really. Uh, That's the whole. Really there's good. a whole South Park episode about stealing poop from Tom Brady. Yeah, that would be re- that would be good poop. Yeah. Uh, I did see. I went to a vintage shop that last weekend, and I saw a fainting couch. And I, if it wasn't outrageously priced for the joke, I would have gotten it for you. How much was it? Uh, it was too expensive. It was like $1,200. I mean, a good couch. That's probably not bad. It, but it had no other use than fainting. It was like one. Of, it was a like a very old fainting yeah. couch. Yeah, well, you know, I don't really faint a lot now that I mention it. Not really ever. Never fainted. If I was going to... I bet my dogs would love it, though. That's, that, that, That'd be yeah. a good dog couch. Uh-huh. Well. Quick, buy flowers. Biden reminds G of wife's birthday. <laughs> he fucking power moved this too. He's like, hey, ain't it your wife's birthday? Well, no, it's because Biden has the same birthday as she's wife. So President Xi was like, happy birthday, Biden. <laughs> and hey, why don't you go say it to your wife? And Biden's like, yeah, and happy birthday to your wife as well. Did you get her anything nice? And he's like, oh, no. Oh, no. President Xi's wife, the first lady of China, is going to be pissed. And Biden's like, that's why we're getting those pandas better back. Better get her something nice. He big dicked Xi. Yeah. Yeah. And then it means. You better get your wife something or I will. The fucking US China relations are so fucking weird. He. Biden, like, seems to genuinely, like, get along with Xi. I guess they've been in contact going back to when they were both vice presidents. Um, They have a good relationship. It seems like it was a productive diplomatic visit. And then Biden immediately is just like, yeah, he's a fucking dictator. <laughs> I mean. And, and, like, half the people are like, yes, he finally says. And the other people are like, do we really need to be calling like China uh, a dictatorship right now? Even if it's true, is this diplomatically like a smart fucking move? Especially after a meeting that seemed like it went well, seemed like it got everyone on the same page. I don't know. Wait until we at least till we get those pandas back. Yeah, those pandas are. Uh, we need those pandas. Yeah, Americans want pandas. Yeah, they do. I sat on the toilet and then my knee bones shattered. Oh. This is actually one of my fears. Yeah, you know, you ever get those popping knees from standing up too long, going on a long walk, you go, and it's like, pfft, pfft. Yes, this lady, yes, I do. This lady sat down, her knee fucking exploded. That's insane. I worry about my knees daily. 
lot, all the running I've been doing is not great. No, running is <laughs> it's actually really fucking bad. I had for... to get uh, one of my friends was like, "You need to go get ice packs, like right?" Because I got the strap on ones. Yeah, so I had to strap them on. Well, there's time. also like, uh, but yes, mine pop all the time. Well, there, with running, it, I, don't, I mean, I'm sure you've looked into this more, but there's like the technique of running is very, very important for people who do it like professionally, mm-hmm. specifically because like, unless you run in a very specific way, it does. Over time, really, really mess oh, yeah, up no, like all of your joints, and especially here with all the hills and stuff, there's no escaping. Like especially if you're going downhill, yeah, it's the worst thing you could possibly do. But you know, I love it, it's keeping me in shape, and uh, at this point, I'm I kind of am addicted to it. So now, imagine how much farther you could go without any damage to your knees if I... you just strapped on a pair of rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. Oh baby. They even got rollerblades that have off-road tires, so yeah, you can go on those, trails yeah. and shit. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Pretty cool. All so much more distance. Imagine going uphill on rollerblades. It can happen. It's part of the work. It's like going uphill on skis. You just got to go sideways, very slowly. Yeah, you got a you got a pizza, reverse pizza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I do regret mm-hmm. uh, the years I've wasted of physical activity, uh, where my knees could have been more useful. Yeah, you, I didn't waste it. I was riding bikes and you could have put those shit, knees right? to good use in the U.S. Armed Forces. <laughs> <laughs> now carrying like a hundred pounds on your back into war zones. Well, now I uh, the, even if the draft extends to people in uh, older age, they can't take me. My knees are not very good. Oh, you know, look at this Donald Trump over here. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I got spurs in my knees. I got knee spurs. Mm-hmm. Final headline, and this is genuinely shocking news. Yeah. End of an era. Snoop Dogg says he's giving up smoking weed. The only thing I can pull out of this is that he's probably about to debut an edibles company. Yeah, I think that I... It's either that. That would be... That's what I think is most likely. Uh, but the other thing is, like... Yeah, he might at this point. He's an old man. He's, like, I think 60 at this point. Maybe even older. Hey, that's not old. Well, old guys rule, but... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not good to be smoking, especially, you know, he's old school. He's he's still smoking joints and shit. It's not good for yeah, your the lungs. Whole, the <laughs> whole, uh, like, marijuana not giving you lung issues is, it, first of all, false. Yeah, but it's se- just not true. But second of all, that was based on, like, a person who smokes, like, a pack a day. Yeah. It's like, obviously, someone who smokes weed probably isn't going to smoke that much. But Snoop Dogg does smoke that much. Yeah, it's... uh. It's, you know, yeah, it's not as bad as the alternative, but uh, it's also, we weren't designed to be inhaling giant fucking clouds of smoke 24-7. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Either either he does have some medical issue or he's debuting a line of edibles, but in either case, or, he, uh, he's drink. not giving up weed. He's giving up smoking weed. Yeah. So I think he'll it be fine. It was very specific yeah. in saying smoking. Yeah. So, uh, it's a new NFT and it comes with slurp juice that is uh, has THC in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I'm sure the announcement is forthcoming. Super Bowl. Yeah. The world's biggest stage to debut a marijuana-related product. Uh, Cheech and Chong are very upset. They would. They never. can only uh, advertise on Twitter. Yeah. Do they still do that? I bl- I think I blocked both. Of them I, I block there. every ad I see. Yeah. It's too Anyways, uh, please like the video. Saw a bunch of comments on the most recent video saying like, "Hey, uh, we know that it's probably is." It, it, uh, Annoying for you guys to keep bringing it up, but the results don't lie. The yeah. past six months of us Likes telling people to like has worked. So please like the video. Please leave a comment. Reply to a comment. Subscribe if you're not already for some Smash reason. the bell. Hit the join button. And of course, we have other videos for you to watch, including the downfall of one George, Anthony DeVolder Santos. Well, I wouldn't count him out just yet. I would never count him out, but... Uh, <laughs> It's going to take quite a miracle. Never bet against top. Santos. And also, uh, someone else that you shouldn't do put any money towards, Elon Musk. Yep. Who... He's getting a movie. And uh, the problems that he has created for himself continue to grow in the past couple of days. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about on Tech News Day next week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.